everybody. Welcome. My name is Allie DePew and this is Joshua Lisbon and we are at the glorious and beautiful MPG Ranch. And okay, thumbs up for yes, thumbs down for no. How many people got snow last night? Anybody? We got snow last night. Oh, I see several people that got snow last night. Brr, it's cold this morning, but my goodness, it's beautiful. So we are here today to learn a lot about mountain lions. And the way this is going to work is Joshua is going to tell you, because Joshua happens to be a mountain lion expert, and in the winter, <laughs> he spends all winter long hiking through the snow looking for mountain lion tracks. He is a mountain lion tracker and researcher. And so we're gonna learn all about mountain lions today. And after a few minutes, we're gonna break into breakout rooms. And the way that'll work is a little thing will pop up and it'll say, go to this breakout room. And then we're gonna talk and ask questions and we'll come back together. And then Joshua will talk a little bit more. Then we'll do that again and come back together for one final conversation. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Joshua. <clears throat> if you have questions, you can also use the chat box. That's another really great way to communicate. So Joshua, a socially distanced hello. Hello. And take it away. Hi everybody. I'm really glad you're here with us today. Um, winter showed up overnight. So we went from about 70 degrees a week ago to cold. Um, so not quite what we were expecting this morning, but at least it is sunny and beautiful. So I'm really glad you could join us. And I'm really glad that you're all working through the Mountain Lion Challenge uh, and taking the time to do that. So thanks for being here. I am at MPG Ranch. Again, my name is Joshua, and I'm the education director here. And in the winters, I get to study mountain lions, and I've done that for the past eight winters now. So uh, I have learned a thing or two about cats, and I'm happy to have the opportunity to share all of that with you through this project. Um, to tell you a little bit about MPG, so that's the name of the, the place where I work, and, uh, and so I'm standing here on MPG land, and we are a biological research station, more or less, which probably doesn't make a lot of sense, but the, the quick way to describe that is we are taking lands that have been impacted by farming or ranching or timber production, things like that, and we are trying to rehabilitate these lands to make them as biodiverse and as native species rich as possible. So to make them a lot healthier. And it's a huge project because we are about 16 and a half thousand acres. So this place is huge. And you are looking at where we meet the Bitterroot River um, behind me here. And uh, so it's a giant operation. And there's a lot of people doing a lot of research to figure out how to do all of this. So we make our research publicly available on our website. Uh, obviously, we're making our educational stuff available to you right now. And we're studying everything here from the below ground systems of how uh, the, the fungi work uh, in the soil, all the way up through the plants and the trees and the pollinators and the raptors and the eagles in the winter and the mountain lions and the bears and all of the things. So we want to learn how all of that life works together so that we can do the best job we can to make this place really healthy. And so that's what we're trying to do. And so mountain lion research is part of that. And what I have seen in the last many winters um, is that we have changed our understanding of mountain lions. We ha we've only been studying them for like 60 years, which is not a very long time to study anything. Uh, especially something as secretive as mountain lions. So during that time, we've learned a lot of new information. And most recently, we've been learning that they have much more complicated social lives than we thought. And we are seeing that out here in our study on the ranch, and that is being confirmed by other studies around the country. And that's really exciting for us because learning new things and changing your understanding of the world is a really important part of, of science and of research. And so it's exciting to be a part of something that is learning these new things. 
And I know that you all are working on writing stories about some of the amazing mountain lions on the ranch. And one of those mountain lions is Willow, or F2, as I know her from the study. And her first kitten, Sula, or F9, from the study. And they're kind of the two major players. And we're making a documentary about them because their lives are so interesting. And what you learned recently is that Willow had six kittens uh, a couple winters ago, which is so, <laughs> so rare that that would happen. And we are uncertain at this point. We do not know if she just had all these kittens, which would be a giant litter, and that would be very rare and special, or if she adopted some of these kittens from another mother who something happened to that mother, and so Willow adopted some of her kittens. We don't know if maybe that's what happened, uh, which would also be incredibly unique and rare and special. Uh, and we're trying to figure that out. So we are hopeful that our data from last winter will, will help to solve that mystery. But we're constantly trying to solve mysteries out there. And that's a lot of what, what this project is and what the tracking is. We wanna know how many individuals we have, how they use the landscape, how they're all related. And then we get these interesting curveballs like Willow having a giant family and not only having a giant family, but successfully raising that family to adulthood, which is, I just can't even tell you how rare that is. It's so special that we got to uh, learn about that and witness that and share that with you. So I'm really excited to, to learn from you what you already know about mountain lions, find out what you want to learn, um, and then ultimately uh, read your work after you, after you work your way through the, the project. That's awesome. I think it's time to find out a little bit what everybody knows about mountain lions. So we are going to go into those breakout rooms. And when we do, we are going to share with each other things that we already know about mountain lions. And then we will report back to Joshua. We are so back. This is awesome. So what did you, what is, what do they know? Uh, they know a lot of things. They know that mountain lions have big pointy teeth and they know that mountain lions will hunt animals much larger than themselves, uh, which I think is incredibly impressive. Um, mountain lions, you know, we, we have footage that we've caught on trail cameras of a uh, mama mountain lion uh, taking down an elk. And so just for easy math, if she's about 100 pounds, the elk's like four or 500 pounds, which is, that's quite a, quite a difference. So they are really, really impressive hunters. Uh, and they definitely knew that. Uh, one individual talked about how they sometimes take uh, kills up into trees, which I think we don't see a lot of, um, but we have seen it, which, so it's, it would have to be a much smaller deer because it would be hard to lift something that is more than your body weight up into a tree, but it just shows how strong uh, and, and what good climbers they are. That's awesome. Kathleen, what did your class? Um, our Go class, our, our breakout room said that they're a lot like uh, cats. In fact, somebody had a cat in their room that they were showing me. And yeah. um, that they are fierce and they're super protective. Yeah, again, I think people saw that video of the mama mountain lion in Utah backing the the hiker down the trail. So yes, they are fierce and they are very protective. And that's what that mama was up to. And yes, they are kind of like a giant version of the cat you have at home. Uh, so you, you, as you learn about mountain lions, you might you might look at your, your house cat a little differently. Oh my goodness. So in our group, we talked a little bit about, well, first of all, how they're predators. Yes. And some people had had experiences with them getting into their Oops. Oh, no. Yep, and eating the chickens. Oh, dear. That happens. Um, and just about some of the other things that mountain lions eat, that they're really fast. They are they're very fast. fast. Runners. We had a guess, and we'll we'll do some more guessing in a few minutes, but one guess was 52 miles an hour, and I said, Whoa. In, just a, in a few minutes, we, we'll, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, and then we also know that they, they climb trees. They do. They're very accomplished they climbers. Out, they, they hang out in the trees. And so those were some of the things. One, uh, one of the other pieces from our group is that we have a lot of kiddos. We had kiddos from Montana, and we had a lot of kiddos from California. Oh, and both so, places with lots of mountain lions. Both places with a lot of mountain lions. And very different management of mountain lions. 
it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. So why don't you go ahead and tell us a little what? bit more about like some of those fun mountain lion facts. <laughs> mountain lion fun facts. So mountain lions are, uh, they are very fast and they are a stalk and ambush predator, which means they're really, really good at getting really, really close to whatever they are hunting. And then they can close that distance with this just flash of speed. So whoever said like 50 miles an hour, you're really close. And that could be right, I guess, depending on what you read. Uh, I've read anywhere from like 35, 40 miles an hour at a sprint, which is, that is incredibly fast. I mean, you think about driving a car at 35 miles an hour or 40 miles an hour. Uh, and so to be able to run that speed is amazing. So they, they close that short distance really quickly with this blinding burst of speed uh, to, to catch their, their prey unaware. And they can also jump incredible distances how far can they jump? Oh, well, further further than that. So we're like, we're socially distanced at about six feet. So they can go farther than six. Oh, yes. Okay. What about 12 feet? Oh, farther than that. What? 20 feet? Farther than that. What? How Crazy to think, but they can actually jump about 40 feet, which is remarkable and their back legs are bigger than their front legs to allow them to jump distances and to get up into trees and to run really really fast um, so that's absolutely amazing so if you think about it a mountain lion could jump over two lanes of traffic on a highway land in the median in the middle and then jump the next two and make it across a whole highway in just a couple of jumps so they they are made of springs that is amazing. Um, can they jump into like vertically as well as yeah. like horizontally? So they can jump probably about twenty feet up a tree. Uh, I have seen, I have seen them do it. Um, the, what I have seen is, you know, if there's a lower branch, obviously they'll, they'll go for that. But twenty feet is a pretty respectable jump up a tree. Uh, and then they have the claws to grab on, and they can climb up really effectively, much like your your house cat can jump and climb really well too. That's amazing. So. Tell us a little bit about the ranch. I'm looking out back here, and I can see, well, there's a river over here. Yes. I've got mountain. Yes. I've got hills. Is this good habitat for a, a mountain lion? Absolutely. This is fantastic habitat for a mountain lion, and we do see them down here in the floodplain sometimes. Um, but they want to be where they can hide really well. And so in these open, grassy areas, we're a lot less likely to see them because they, they don't have stuff to hide behind. So they like to have shrubs and trees and forest. And we have that down in the floodplain and we have that up high in the mountains too. And in between we have like sagebrush and bitterbrush and things like that. And they, they'll definitely be running around in there or in any of the drainages. And so what Ali is showing you, this is a mountain lion hide and you can see how well uh, this mountain lion would blend in to the environment here. So this is a smaller mountain lion. This is a young one here uh, that came from, I think, from FWP. Um, which That's is, Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Yes, Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. There's acronyms for everything. Uh, and what you can see here is that this mountain lion, as uh, most adult mountain lions, well, all adult mountain lions, are a single color predominantly. They're this kind of tawny brown color. Uh, which is really beautiful and makes wonderful camouflage for them. And when they are kittens, they have spots, and that helps them to hide and stay safe when they're really small. Joshua, I noticed that the tail on this mountain lion is incredibly long. I wonder if we could have students type in the chat why they think a mountain lion's tail is so long. And we'll give you a, a second or two to do that. We'll take some guesses, and then Joshua will, will tell you a little bit about, yeah. about the length of this tail. And Kathleen, when you have some answers, would you go ahead and read those to us? You bet. Um, while they're putting their guesses in about why the tails are so long, I, I have to pass along this comment from Glenn. Loved it. He said, you can't, you can't run from mountain lions. All you can do is hope you get out of there in one piece. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so you definitely, that. if you meet a mountain lion, the last thing you want to do is run away. Um, 
you don't want to turn your back on them. You don't want to run away. Um, but also, thankfully, we are not on the menu uh, typically as people. So it is exceptionally rare for mountain lion to actually attack anybody. What if you saw that thing with the, the hiker being pushed backwards down a trail, that mother was really aggressive, but all of that charging and snarling was all a bluff to intimidate that hiker and push him away from her babies. She didn't really want to hurt that guy or she would have. And he didn't turn and he didn't run. Uh, so he did the right thing and he yielded uh, ground steadily until they hit a point where she felt like he was far enough away and then she ran away. Um, and so everybody went home in one piece and that worked out really well. So if you meet a mountain lion, you definitely do not want to turn and run away. Uh, that would be that would be bad because that would trigger in them a, a response to want to chase you. And so that that would be a problem. Oh my gosh. So do we have any guesses for the tale, oh, Kathleen? My goodness, you're gonna love these. So I'm just gonna read a bunch of them and then you can comment. Um, I had um, to survive the winter. Several of them say for balance. Um, several say to warm the cubs um, and uh, to keep warm. And because tails are cool. <laughs> and um, also they eat a lot, so their tails are long. They need to be able to jump far. I, I love that tails are cool. So <laughs> why not just have an awesome tail? I wish I had one. <laughs> yeah, but the truth of it is, is it's for balance. Um, having that long tail as they, cause they are so athletic and if they're chasing prey, they're making really quick turns and that tail helps to counterbalance their movements um, and, and makes them a much more uh, effective hunter. So, uh, so they use it for balance. Also, um, also sorry, I, I, I misspoke. Glenn said, I thought you were talking about fur when, when he said keep warm, but um, several of oh. the uh, participants said their fur looks so soft. It is, it's very soft and it's there's not a lot to it really uh if you think about um how how much it takes for us to stay warm it, it's uh it's really short um and i don't know Ooh, here we go friends let's see Go ahead, there you go. About the fur. Yeah. Well, it's very short, but uh, I was thinking about like I had a dog who had very short fur and she would grow this incredible undercoat and shed it out and that would keep her surprisingly warm all winter long. But mountain lions too, um, they, they hunt constantly, they feed constantly. If it is too cold, they will take shelter uh, in den sites and in culverts under roads or wherever they can to get out of the cold or out of the weather. Um, so they're not immune to the cold. Um, they are affected by it. So they, they have to stay highly active and well fed to be able to stay warm. Um, but their fur is, it's shorter and it's that solid color uh, of that tawny brown with like, they have darker, uh, darker hair there between their toes and their, their belly hair is a little bit longer and whiter. You can see that. You know, another thing I'm looking at is I'm noticing, yeah, that they've got uh, fur in between their, their toes, probably they to do. keep their toes and their feet warm. Yep. Um, and then this, I am I was surprised. I'm looking at the claws on this. These don't seem like very big claws for such, um, for, for a mountain lion, what I would think about. What's going on with these claws, Joshua? The claws are retractable. What just does that like, mean? Just like your cat at home their claws can come out and their claws can be put away. And so for, for the cats, they will use their claws when climbing a tree or on slippery terrain for better grip. Uh, and then of course they use them when they are hunting. And so their claws are thinner and more delicate than like uh, the claws on, on say like a dog or a bear or something like that. And, uh, and they're quite sharp. And they're very, very effective for grabbing onto and holding on to prey because they're curved and the way they come out, they will actually hook into stuff. And then they have a dew claw on the front 
Uh, so they have four, four toes up front. Uh, and then on the, the four limbs, they have a dew claw higher up uh, from the, the paw. And that has actually the largest claw in their assortment of claws. And so then if they grab you like with their, their front feet, they, they can use that dew claw too to really hold on. And then they've got two extra ones latched on there. So it's a really amazing thing. And you'll see too, like if you have a cat at home and they have claws, if you press on their foot, it kind of pushes the claws out. And so we see that with cats too, just depending on what they're walking in, sometimes the claws register a little bit. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I am wondering if it's time to go into another breakout room. And this time when we go into the breakout room, I would like to know what questions you have for Joshua. Um, so we're going we're gonna to think about those questions. You're going to ask them. We might talk about them a little bit in the breakout room. And then when <laughs> mostly we, I'm just trying to remember them all. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we come back, we'll ask, we're just going to ask Joshua a whole big list of questions. So now is your moment. If you've been just dying to know one thing or two things about mountain lions, we, we go into our breakout rooms, go ahead and ask. I'm going to jump in on the questions that I got real quick before I forget them. So uh, we had how many kittens can they have, which that's a really good question, especially since you're looking at a mom that had a crazy number of kittens. So most sources that you will read about mountain lions say average litter size is one to four. I found one source in my searching that told me they could have up to six. So that seems to be the upper end of anything that I have ever read about mountain lions. We have this one mama that had six, but we don't know if they're all hers or not. She may have adopted, uh, or maybe she just had six. So it seems like it could be biologically possible for her to do that. However, we don't know if she did or not. And of whatever number they have, usually only one or two survive. So raising that many uh, to adulthood is just amazing. Uh, we also had a question about their lifespan. So average lifespan is say 11 to 13 in the wild. They really are gonna start to, after like eight to nine years of old or nine years of age, their, um, their teeth are pretty worn down. So they become less and less effective at hunting. They, they slow down, they have injuries that have been kind of building up over a lifetime and so past like eight or nine years, things start to drop off for them. And so by 10, 11, 12, 13, like 13 is kind of, that's a pretty old cat. Um, so that's, that's kind of the upper end for wild mountain lions. Um, we had, do they like to sleep in trees? Uh, I find them bedding kind of under trees, like in the, the forest loam, like in the duff is where I find a lot of, a lot of their bed sites. They will bed all sorts of random places. And we do find them in trees, certainly. Uh, so they will go up into trees to enjoy some sunshine or to seek shelter or to just get away from the world. I don't know how much they sleep up there, uh, though I'm sure they could. And they will also use like mistletoe clumps because they, they have some thermal mass to them. And so they're kind of nice too. Uh, so they definitely do spend some time up in trees. Uh, they do sleep in, in more sheltered places and sometimes just out in the open under trees and things like that. Um, Trying to think of what the other questions were that I had. What's their height? Oh, average height. Hang on. So they're about, so they're two, about two, two and a half feet tall, so like just up past my knee. Oh my gosh. So I have a question. I wanna I wanna answer or ask some of our questions from yeah. our group. What do you got? Because it piggybacks. So one of the questions was how many cubs does a mountain lion mama average over her lifetime? So what we did is we said, well, we know that mountain lions usually have between one to four, sometimes a few more cubs. And we guessed that they live somewhere between eight to 10 years. So we were working out a little bit of a math problem. Um, but what we don't know is do they have cubs every year or do they miss years? So how do we figure that out? And what, what does that look like on the ranch? What have you seen? So they, so let's just say they live till they're like 10, just to pick a nice round number. Yep. They can start having kittens by two years old. It's more likely they're going to start having kittens by three years old. Okay. And they will have kittens every other year. Okay. That's the normal thing. It doesn't always work out that way. 
sometimes they do have kittens back to back years, but kittens usually stay with their mothers for on average 15 months. So maybe they'll leave a little sooner, maybe they'll leave a little later, but 15 months is longer than a year. So having, if you have kittens and you have them each year, then you suddenly have older kittens that are dependent on you and brand new kittens that are dependent on you. And then you have a mom with a mixed age group of kittens. And so we have seen that and that does happen. Um, and we had that happen here on the ranch and we documented that with all kinds of videos uh, of this, this adolescent uh, kitten following her mom around while she had new kittens, which was really, really cool and another unique situation. And I don't know how common that is. It is more common certainly that every other year uh, they, would, they would potentially have offspring because the one crop is launched off into the world and then they can focus their energies and attention on the new babies. So with that information, um, let's see, if, would anybody like to do that math problem? And when you come up with a, a guesstimate, a, a range of answers, you could type that in the chat and then Kathleen will let us know in a couple of minutes how many, roughly, how many kittens could a mom, mama mountain lion have over the course of her life? So You'll have quite a range there too, depending whether you choose one kitten per litter or four kittens yep. per litter. So you could even just say how many litters instead of how many individuals, because we don't know, how many litters might she have over the course of her life? That would be a really good one as well. Easier math. Easier math. Well, we can have some of the middle schoolers do the harder math. Some of the elementary schoolers do the easy math. Yeah. And if you want to try for the harder math, go for it. Yeah. Uh, so, okay, so another question we had is, what are their main prey? The easy answer is deer. They will go after deer. Um, that is that they really like to go after deer. And they will also go after elk if they get bigger and are capable of doing that. They will, however, eat all sorts of stuff. And so you will find a wide range of um, food uh, for mountain lions. And then if, if they're young males and the young males are going to strike out looking for uh, territory, once they are mature enough to leave their mother, they leave that home range and they go to find a new home range and they need to eat whatever they can catch. So they have a really broad understanding of what food is. So they'll eat, you know, really just about anything. Um, and then you get mountain lions sometimes that specialize in weird stuff. So you'll get a mountain lion that's like, like a mountain goat specialist or a bighorn sheep specialist. And they, for whatever reason, like they have success hunting that. And so they just keep hunting that. And then that can like really like hammer a population, like a local population of bighorn sheep or something. And then if that mountain lion passes on eventually, you'll get a new one in who is not a specialist in that and then the sheep rebound and then that mountain lion goes after deer so it's amazing it's amazing what what they'll eat but the easy answer is they really like deer that's awesome kathleen how about from your breakout room um well you've answered most of them just a quick one on what color are the baby mountain lion's eyes oh they're blue they have blue eyes when they're born how cool is that how cool is that? But we have several in the chat that want to know if there is such thing as an albino mountain lion and if, if you've ever seen one. I have never seen one, nor have I ever read about that happening. Uh, but boy, you never know. Uh, there's, we see albino all sorts of things out there in the wild. It would be shockingly rare for that to happen. But yeah, you never know. Um, also, something that has never been recorded and is believed to not be possible is a melanistic mountain lion, so one that is black in color, even though people do report seeing that. And recently out of Vermont, someone has video of a black bobcat, which is also incredibly rare. So apparently it's possible with bobcats, so who knows? Hey, we've got some guesses on kittens, numbers of kittens. Um, yeah, what do we got? Jennifer says she thinks about 20 kittens in a lifetime. And we had Rochelle's class from Florence. Hi, Florence. 
Um, nine to 36 cubs if they live to be about 10 years old. Yeah, so they could produce quite a bit. So yeah, if they have, if they say they can start having babies at two, which is a little early, but not impossible. And if they live to 10, which is a little short, but we'll say average, then yeah, you've got, um, you've got eight years of life in there and they're gonna have kittens every other year. So you got four litters and then you can just choose your value for kittens. That's How amazing. many are they gonna have? Yeah. And so, okay, I have a follow up question with that. Um, if I'm a mama mountain lion and I have, let's just say four in my litter, um, and they're, they've started to eat meat. So they're not just nursing anymore. So about, they're about three months old okay. then. They're about three months old. How much, how many deer or what, how much prey do I need to bring home to my kittens and how frequently to feed everybody? That is going to vary a lot based on how many kittens you have, yep. how old and how big they are, and how successful you are as a hunter, because there will sometimes be leaner times than other times. Um, but the average easy answer is a deer every week to 10 days. Wow. So you've really got to be an active, busy mama mountain lion to raise all those cubs. Yeah, and that's what I think about with Willow. She had six, six hungry babies. Wow. They would eat a deer very, very quickly, which is maybe why she was killing elk because you get, you get to just- More bang for your buck. Yeah, you get to just hang out in one place for a little bit longer. It would limit, I mean, like on the one hand, an elk is riskier than a deer, so you could get injured and that could really be problematic, but you would be engaging in that risk less frequently. So that might be quite advantageous. Oh my gosh, that's fantastic. So. We're almost out of time, a ton about mountain lions. Um, I hope all of you watching are going to participate in the challenge. And if you need to know more about that, you can contact Kathleen or I. Um, but Joshua, before we go, we've yeah. asked a lot of the students, we've learned a little bit about what they know. You've told us a little bit about what you know. We've asked the students what they want to know. My question for you is what do you want to know as a researcher about mountain lions? What is it, what's the burning question that you have? I think, I think what is most exciting for me is that we've only been studying mountain lions for about 60 years, which is not a very long time. We started in like the 1960s, 1970s with uh, Hornocker's study in Idaho. And we've learned a lot, but there's a lot we don't know. And the thing that I think is so cool is that we, the more we look at the natural world and the better our ability to observe it. So we have all these camera traps we can put out so that we are not influencing behavior. We, we pick up hair and scat, so we're a non-invasive study. We don't collar cats, so we're just picking up hair and scat and we can run the genetics and learn all this stuff that's going on. And the, the more tools we have to look at the natural world, the more we learn and the more we realize it is more complicated and intelligent than we ever gave it credit for. And so no surprise there, right? This is an incredibly intricate, complicated, interconnected web of life out here. And so what I love is learning more about that. And I love that we're learning more about mountain lions. So I wanna learn more about their social interactions. I wanna learn more about the secret lives of mountain lions because we are learning they are more social. They're not necessarily just the rugged individuals that we thought they were. They have complicated interactions between individuals that have overlapping territories or territories that bump up against each other. And that is way more complicated than we ever thought. And so learning these new things and changing what we thought we knew is the most exciting thing for me. I guess I like, I like it when I'm wrong, right? Like I went into this whole study with all these assumptions and I had read everything about where we were to at that point. And in the course of this study, we have learned a lot more, but mountain lion researchers generally have learned a lot more. And so it's really cool when you think you know something and then you're proven wrong and you have to learn something new. I think that's the coolest thing. So I just wanna keep learning new things.